In this video, I want to show you how to use Excel to compute the solution to a system of n linear equations using uh, some matrix functions, particularly the matrix inversion and matrix multiply functions. So to begin, let me reference a um, video that I posted previously, and this was where we had a system of three equations in uh, unknown variables v1, v2, v3, and we would put that into a matrix form and uh, which was compactly written as uh, g times vector v equals vector s, s being just the constants on the right side of our system of equations. And we found that in order to um, solve for the unknown uh, v's, we needed to compute the inverse of the matrix g. So if we find g inverse, then we simply multiply g inverse times s, these uh, constants on the right of our system of equations and we can find uh, our unknown variable. So that's what we're going to do in Excel. So I have the system up here. It's G times V is equal to S. Here's our G matrix. So we want to invert that. I have the inverted matrix here and here is, I should call that, I'm sorry, that's S. Here's S and here's the solution. Now I think based on my example previously that I worked, I had one, two, three, so we'll we'll keep it at that. Um, yes. Okay. So the the main issue is how do you compute the inverse of the matrix? Notice there's some funky stuff going on here. There's curly brackets around the functions, the functions. So let me delete that and just show you how you do this. You select the the one one position for the the inverse that matrix that you're trying to compute and then we will type m equals or equal m all the matrix functions begin with m m i n v and you should see it pop up tab and now you specify an array which you're going to grab the um, the three by three array corresponding to g close the parentheses hit enter now what you're going to do is select the full 3 by 3 cell array for G inverse. And then press F2. Okay, press F2 will go into the edit mode. And then with the cursor blinking in that cell, you now press Control Shift Enter. And it will populate this function in all the cells. Notice as I click around it is the same function but it's got these curly brackets around it. Okay, so that's how you enter a matrix function. You can just go to the help in Excel and it will remind you of that if you forget. So F2 and then Control Shift Enter. So then all we have to do is we copied down the, the value the vector s and now we just need to do matrix multiplication and how is that done? In the same way we'll go equal erase it for a moment. Okay. Equal m multiply and we're going to multiply this array g inverse and we're going to multiply, we'll do comma, s. And we close this, hit enter, and then we go back and select, this is going to be a 3 by 1, select the, that array, hit F2 to go into the edit mode, and then control shift enter. And that's it. Now as a separate um, way to compute the uh, solution, I've used Kramer's rule here. So I won't explain Kramer's rule uh, in detail here. There's a separate video on that. But uh, the advantage of Kramer's rule largely is that you don't have to take the inverse of a matrix. You just have to take multiple determinants. So the way it works, um, I guess quickly I do have to explain it a little bit, at least what I'm doing here in the spreadsheet, is I have G and then I have, I'm calling it I, I should call it S, change those to S. Okay, and um, what we will do is to form three new matrices right here. The first matrix 
will have the first column replaced with S. The second matrix will have the second column replaced with S, and the third matrix will have the third column replaced with X. And then we have to compute the determinant of the original um, G matrix, which we have done here. It's simply, um, you just type uh, equal M for matrix, and then DET, it'll pop up tab, select the 3x3 three three array, and that's it. No need to do the control shift enter because it's a scalar result. Now we want to do the same thing for um, these other three matrices. We calculate the determinant for all three of them and their, their values are here. And then the simple um, calculation, and you just take a simple quotient uh, to calculate V1, we take this determinant, the determinant of this matrix that has G, except that column 1 is replaced by S, and we divide this determinant by the determinant of G. So here's the formula. Um, I'm going to take, and what I've done is actually called, I've called the determinant of G, D. You see that up here in the name range. I've called um, the determinant for this first matrix D underscore 1, the next matrix D underscore 2, final matrix D underscore 3, and V1, V2, V3 are calculated by simply doing D1 divided by D, D2 divided by D, and D3 divided by D. Okay. Lastly, if uh, when I mention name ranges you don't know what I'm talking about, that is the ability to assign variable names for cells or range of cells. So, uh, very quickly, if you go to formulas, the tab formulas, there is a button in the middle called manage or name manager click on that and it will bring up a list of variables that you have defined within um, your uh, your spreadsheet some of them are no longer good like this one so I'm gonna uh, delete it but um, so this tells you that D is defined or refers to sheet 1 cell C22 now how do you define these um, if I wanted to call this right here V1, I could go up, there's two ways I could enter it. I could go into this little edit box up in the left corner, go in there and type V1. Now, if I do that, there's a problem. It actually jumped to cell V1, and that's because you can't use name ranges that actually can also double as valid cell, um, cell addresses or cell names. So V1 is a valid range cell range. So instead I'm going to call it V underscore 1. So V underscore 1, hit enter, and now I can say go, I can go here and say equal V underscore 1, and it pops up, it shows me a little label, and then I can do squared, and it actually just squared 25. And when I look at squared 5, when I look at the formula, I don't see, um, what is it, uh, H24 squared, I actually see V underscore 1 squared. So it makes the formulas a lot easier to read. Now if you don't like this and you want to delete it, then um, you don't like the formula, then you can go up to your manage name or your name manager and here is V1. We can delete it or you can edit it so it points somewhere else. So at any rate, it makes the equations much more readable when you do that. So let me go over here and I'll do V underscore Oops, it's got to be V underscore, and it's not cap sensitive, I don't think. And then V underscore 3, and there 